A new chapter begins down here at Ground Zero tomorrow. That's when the memorial to the victims of 9-11 will be officially unveiled. It will open to the public beginning Monday. I recently met with the memorial's architects who gave me a first-hand look at his remarkable vision. So we're now on the memorial plaza. Michael Arad's memorial has finally come to life. Nearly a decade after the Israeli-American architect first sketched, making what was gone visible. So the final touches are being worked on on the name panels. Names of 9-11 victims are etched in bronze panels like these around a pair of memorial pools. They are one acre square, marking the footprints where the Twin Towers stood. Waterfalls cascade 30 feet. Arad calls this reflecting absence. I wanted to create a civic and public place that would bring people together and would allow us to stand at the site of where their t these towers were uh, as a community. A jury of 12 citizens chose his design in 2004. One of those jurors was a 9-11 family member, Paula Berry. It's even better than what we were expecting. Berry's husband, David, worked on the 89th floor of the World Trade Center's South Tower, above where the second plane hit. David and Paula had three young sons. Here is a memorial that in the most beautiful, most poignant way, memorializes the loss of the lives. And at the same time, it also memorializes the loss of the buildings. Arad's vision was one of 5,200 submitted anonymously from 49 states and 62 countries. We were looking for something um, as simple and as uncomplicated and as powerful as possible. Juror James Young is a professor who's written about the Holocaust. He says this memorial is meant for everyone. Both the families and people who have no other connection than what they read in the papers or, or saw on TV. Jurors narrowed the field to eight finalists, the memorial cloud seen here, and this entry called Gardens of Light were Arad's toughest competition. Arad sealed the win by softening his design with the addition of trees to symbolize regenerated life. You'd go home and you'd think about the eight designs and that one just kept staying with you because it was so easy to imagine it. As an architect, can you give me a sense of the relief that you had when they tested the water here and it worked? We knew it was going to work, but the moment that I first heard these waterfalls start up, I was actually struck not so much by how they looked, by how they sounded. I don't want people to come here and be impressed by design and ingenuity. I want them to have a moment of meaningful communion with the past. And joining us now live is the architect of the memorial, Michael Arad. Michael, good morning good to morning, you. Michael. Good morning. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It. How close is this design to what you originally designed 10 years ago? I think it's uh, changed in some ways over the years, but it's remained very true to its heart, to the direction that we charted out for it back in 2003. Uh, but in some ways it's gotten better because of this very difficult process that it had to go through. It brought on board many other voices, many suggestions, and it was not an easy process, but it was a process that, uh, that strengthened the design. Speaking of the heart, one of the smaller details may actually in this design have one of the biggest impacts and that's the lone survivor tree. Uh, this tree that you found from the ashes that's been nursed back to health and is really a central component of all of this design. It is such a beautiful story and I wasn't involved in uh, you know, the recovery here at the site and finding the tree. That was uh, the recovery workers who found it. And then the New York City Parks Department personnel nursed it back to health up in Van Cortlandt Park, um, and during that period it was actually struck by lightning, but nothing, nothing's going to stop this tree, and it's, uh, it's a beautiful story of survival. And it talks about that resiliency that you saw here in New York, and the way that people found it and nursed it back to health and brought it to the site, and it's one of a few hundred trees that are going to be here on the plaza. There's something beautiful about that. Let's talk about the waterfalls, as you, as you call it, reflecting absence. Tell me about the symbolism behind those. Uh, you know, this idea of, uh, I was drawn to the water actually a few months after the attack, and I imagined two voids in the Hudson River, the surface of the river torn open, forming two squares, and the water cascading into these voids, and these voids never filling up. This, this idea of, uh, of persistent absence, that time doesn't erase. Um, and I explored that idea, and it's changed in coming from the Hudson to the site. Uh, 
but it is very much about marking the footprints of these towers, um, uh, standing there, seeing the water disappear into that void, and that void doesn't fill up. You've also incorporated the names of the September 11 victims in the memorial. How important was that to you? I think it was one of the most important and challenging issues we've had to deal with over the last eight years. And it, I think above all else, uh, meant so much to family members. And there was obviously, uh, there were long discussions about how we should arrange the names. But what was important to me was to emphasize individual loss and the sense of collective loss that we all suffered that day. And not to list the names as if they are in a directory, but to give each name a place on the memorial that is its own. And when you see the graphic arrangement of the names, they're not arranged in columns. Each name is an island onto itself. But so if you can dig a, a deeper in, there's also a reason why one name is next to another and next to another. Sure. And that's not an alphabetical listing. It's a listing that came out of reaching out to close to 3,000 families and asking them if there are names of other people they would like to see next to the name of the person they lost. Michael Arad, we thank, thank you. you so much. Opening day tomorrow and Monday. You nervous? Very quickly? I'm not nervous. He's I'm good. really looking forward to it. <laughs>